Okay, sorry. And um, the section three uh, for the worms unloading channels with taper connections uh, to the electric traps. The microfluidic device was uh, mounted on an inverted microscope uh, and connected to a source meter controlled uh, by MATLAB. They distributed a constant electric field of six volts per uh, centimeter in the electrical traps at the outlet uh, inlet electrodes throughout uh, the chip. Regarding the worms culture, eight one uh, day old worms were picked uh, up and loaded into the inlet. The worms were pressure pulled uh, towards uh, the electrical traps and the loading efficiency uh, was quantified. A previous experiment showed that the anode facing worms could deposit significantly more X highlighting uh, that um, the worms uh, loading orientations with respect to the um, electrical uh, directions could affect the result to maintain equal exposure conditions among randomly oriented worms they appear of uh, five and and five uh, pulses separated uh, by a uh, 25 acclimat acclimatation period for uh, 10 minutes and uh, next uh, fluorescence imaging uh, was con conducted for deter determining uh, the accumulations of microplastics in each worms that was tested in the device uh, this figure shows the, the total numbers of eggs laid per worms after five or ten minutes in the single worm supplies within the five minutes the worms were exposed uh, to ten undirectionals and directional, uh, another pulses which were selected uh, for the rest of the experiments the off chip egg laying uh, acid was conduct, conducted for the glucose experiments as a validation step of to prove uh, that uh, glucose was affecting the worms the number of eggs were deposited of chip uh, was a uh, uh, here uh -huh. of chip was higher because a uh, of chip worms had more time of reproductive a uh, new eggs while the unchip worms were egg depleted uh, rapidly and removed from the device. Uh, yeah. Here uh, you can see the effect of one uh, 100 millimolar glucose on electric on chip and a natural of chip uh, X laying of adult C elegans. And finally, uh, in this figure, you can see the effect of microplastics at 101,000 milligrams per liter uh, concentrations. The microplastics uh, integrate number of electrically deposited uh, eggs per worms counted uh, over 10 minutes. Um, yeah. Um, length and um, diameter of the worms at each microplastic uh, concentrations. Um, in conclusion, this approach can also be used as an ecotoxicology screening technique for determining the sublethal effects of other materials such as heavy metals or on C elegans. Uh, that is all, thank you.
Eric Nguyen Can Nam Siu Can you hear me? Yes, now we can. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay, uh, I'm going to start again. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Of course. Okay. So, okay. Um, this paper introduces a, a deep learning methodology for normal cells in addiction, uh, with, which come from digital conventional PAP tests. And it classifies images according to the probability uh, of that image field to contain abnormal cells. Uh, the main goal with this ranking is to improve the cytopathology's performance with generate abnormal patterns that may uh, support cervical cell screening. Uh, and diagnosing potentially reducing the amount of image field to, to examine. Uh, regarding a proposed methodology, uh, the purpose is to is to uh, to develop a, a methodology that is able uh, of segment both free lying uh, and clamps of a normal cell with high overlapping from the this image of conventional pap test. In this slide, uh, figure one provides information about uh, the, flow, the flow chart of this methodology. The image containing only background or poor information are eliminated with, without previous segmentation. Uh, the segmentation method that is based on convolutional neural network detects uh, abnormal uh, cells. Um, then uh, post-processing -pro steps is applied to improve uh, the abnormal cell segmentation. Uh, when an image doesn't include uh, pixels that belong mm, to abnormal cell patterns, it is classified uh, as, a, as, a, as other classes as you see here in figure one, eight. Finally, uh, the average area was used of segmented regions to rank images. Uh, this ranking process sort the image uh, according to the probability that they contain abnormal cells. Therefore, uh, the goal is able to aid the cytopathologies in diagnosis of premalignant and malignant lesion of, of cervix. Um, on the other hand, about uh, data database, uh, Fewer, fewer two shows the images uh, sampled from Brazilian uh, health system. This data has several desirable characteristics, such as uh, it comes from a broad racial diversity and whole ground through image for normal cells that are uh, manually segmented. Uh, in addition, it collection keeps a record of cervical cells from routine pap tests. The green age that you see here uh, represents the growth through of our normal cells. Uh, regarding uh, Data re reduction to highlight essential images. Uh, the scanning process of pap test slide generates a great uh, amount of cell image with mostly uh, present only background and poor information about, uh, and therefore uh, a low probability of a normal cell presence. Uh, that's why a refining process is applied to, to remove this image. Uh, and therefore, they reduce the, the, num uh, the number of input image for segmentation steps. In this process, uh, thresholding basis technique removes the image background is used. Uh, you can see here in figure through the refining process. Uh, in A, uh, this, this sample present only background and noise. And in B, this sample contains poor information. Uh, now we're going to talk about the training uh, convolutional neural network for cyto uh, cytology. Um, the pap test uh, slide images uh, that are preserved in the refining processes are, are then preprocessed and cropped to generate uh, a set of images for the training process. Um, they may be classified into abnormal class of other class. So, figure four show how the convolution neural network uh, error decreases during the training. Uh, regarding segmentation and ranking, uh, we can say. Uh, that the segmentation step consists uh, of classifying the small cropped image from the new set of test image using a pixel-wide sliding window uh, as input to the convolutional neural network. Uh, figure 5 shows the 
ROC uh, curve um, area under uh, ROC curve obtained by the proposed methodology. Um, or else uh, here, okay. Uh, the assessment method methodology applies the true positive, uh, false uh, negative, uh, false positive, raised to quantitatively evaluate uh, the segmentation result, as you see here in table one. Uh, true positive is the number of abnormal cells that are correctly segmented. Uh, false negative corresponds to the number of abnormal cells that are not segmented. Um, false positive is the number of regions that are segmented incorrectly. Uh, as abnormal cells, uh, to calculate the overall detection uh, of abnormal cell is considered that the algorithm correctly detected more than 60% of pixels based on uh, these values, uh, F-score, precision, uh, and recall measure was calculated. Uh, figure seven, as you see here, uh, show examples uh, of success, uh, green ages, um, failure, uh, Red and, um, and blue edges of the proposed uh, methodology and the algorithms evaluated uh, according to this table. The regions in green edges uh, were correctly segmented as a normal uh, cells, while the regions uh, in blue are a normal regions that were not segmented uh, due, due to its uh, small size. Um, the region in red, in red edges are clumps of neutrophil that are well cemented incorrectly uh, as a normal cells. Uh, as a final conclusion, uh, we can say that the most classic, uh, the most classical method that, that identify uh, abnormal cells uh, presents um, a high computational uh, cost because there is a prior cementation step to to the detect candidate, candidate uh, region containing uh, dark background, uh, noise, both normal and normal cells. In contrast, uh, this methodology has a low computational cost uh, because the convolutional uh, neural network uh, was trained to, to segment uh, only abnormal cells, and it didn't extract a high computational feature uh, from each region. So that's all, thank you for your attention. Uh, okay, um, my topic uh, is uh, long-term high-resolution imaging and culture of C elegance in chip uh, health hybrid microfluidic device for development studies. Um, uh, okay, uh, development study in model organized such as a uh, uh, C elegant are um, are based on cell cultures to obtain image. Uh, this image requires high resolution for immobilization and, uh, and may have side effects. Um, in this article, the chief allows the worms to be cultured from the L1 stage for immobilization. Uh, a biocompatible uh, uh, polymer is used, is used uh, fluoronic um, uh, P100 27, the health phase is sufficient to immobilize the animals. Uh, in this part, in figure one, uh, um, to for immobilize animals on the chip microfluidic device and immobilize a solution, a PF 127 are designed. Uh, there are eight growing chambers. Um, a four on each side of the chamber. A large, large culture chambers were used, allow worms to grow under constriction and to move um, uh, from the acoustic medium. Um, cross section, um, a list to flow expansion, uh, speed decrease. Uh, the exchange of media and nutrition occurs without the worms having to. Uh, constantly sweep, swim. Um, in this part, in part E, the valves at the inlets uh, and outlets function to trap animals during the experiment. Um, 
In this part, in figure two, the quality, uh, the quality of the image obtained uh, using agar medium uh, sodium acid as the mobilizing agent is compared um, 25% percent um, uh, uh, pre pressure uh, per, per volume, um, um, PF 127 heli is used inside the chip. Um, in this part, figure A, uh, A and D, uh, both methods neuronal cell body synapse around one millimeter along ventral and dorsal, uh, the PF 127 heli did not show any um, any not any not uh, not uh, not, uh, not uh, out of fluorescence and um, and this part figure three three indicators are observed a uh, time for a laying a uh, pharyngeal pumping rate in young adult stage a uh, number of offspring in the first um, 44 hours of a lion and um, in part A and, and part C. Uh, none of these parameters show it a statistically significant difference between, um, between uh, a hell and control samples. This means that PF 127 during the early stage of development has no adverse effect on C elegans, and the hell can be used for immobilization during uh, live imaging experiments and uh, long team development studies. And the conclusion that she be shown to be profit, uh, profitable for long uh, term uh, with, uh, with animals from L, L1 stage, uh, hell during the early larval stage uh, has no f not effect on animal development and the chief facilitates the acquisition uh, 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 acquisition of data in a faster way thanks Good morning, everyone. I'm going to share my screen. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes. Thank you. Um, okay, so the topic of this paper is droplet-based microfluidic synthesis of hydrogel microparticles via click chemistry-based cross-linking for the control release of proteins. In, in this paper, the authors propose the generation of hydrogel microparticles in order to encapsulate here um, proteins and to control how they release. So they achieve to um, extend the time that the protein is captured and control the release uh, very slowly. For example, during a week, the protein it takes a week for the protein to release from these hydrogel particles so they um, there are some methods but it's very uh, challenging to produce micro droplets that are monodispersed it means that the size of the of the micro uh, the hydrogel microparticles is um, uh, is is very similar so is the difference between them is not higher than the five percent so they uh, propose this new method and they use a microfluidic device with this flow focusing architecture as you can see in figure one uh, here uh, they also um, they are going to produce uh, the same method that we use to produce micro droplets and through this channel one and channel two two these per phase are going to uh, enter and these are go going to be the two hydrogel precursor materials and then in the intersection, the oil, light mineral oil, is going to uh, make possible that the droplets are formed. But after the droplet is formed, they need to mix. And that's why they use a serpentine, as you can see here. And this is the mixing re region. So they had to quantify 
how many of these curves it's going to be necessary to mix these two hydrogel precursors. And, and to do that, in order to do that, to evaluate it, they use a fluorescence. So they mix one of these hydrogels with fluorescence and they quantify uh, these uh, mixing index in order to, uh, to see how well mixed is the mixture. So here in this uh, figure in the supplementary material, you can see that uh, there is one microgel precursor with fluorescence and another that it's colorless and they start mixing. Here you see in the section C and D, um, one of the uh, different images at different time points. And so they are going to uh, evaluate how many of these curves does the serpentine has to have in order to completely mix. So the mixing index is going to be from zero to when it's not mixed and one when it's completely mixed. And they use um, image analysis to determine this value. So then um, also they try different mixtures of the hydrogels, as you can see here in figure two, and they uh, calculate also the capillary number. So this capillary number is the relation between the viscous force and the interfacial tension between the two um, hydrogels. And here in figure three, you can see the mixing index, how it in, improves uh, when the number of turns in the serpentine channel increases. So here you see that the, it's very close to one when there are nine a number of turns. So they determine these nine number of turns. So they des designed the micro channels like this. And they uh, reach um, to produce these monodispersed micro uh, droplets so that they are going to form these microparticles, hydrogen microparticles, and the diameter that they obtained was 55 microns. And here you see uh, with these two candidates, these two hydrogels that they use, one is with hyaluronan and the other one is with dextran. These are biocompatible and they allow to encapsulate a protein such as monoclonal antibodies. And uh, here you see the different uh, curves for the release of these proteins and antibodies. And they also uh, prove uh, that the antibody is functional. So here you see this is the, the monoclonal antibody, bevacizumab, and uh, it's functional during these time points. And, and, and yes, and they try with the with the cell line, the uh, human embryonic and the, from the kidney of the of the embryonic kidney, and th these two uh, hydrogels are biocompatible. Uh, with the dextron, they concluded that uh, dextron uh, uh, they achieve a better uh, protein release. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, hi everyone, uh, I'm going to be presenting this paper. Here, the authors have developed a microfluidic multi-size spheroid array capable of culturing 3D multicellular spheroids with high rep reproducibility and high throughput uh, formats using a wide range of different tissue types. So the microfluidic multi-size spheroid array is comprised of six microfluidic culture channels, each containing 15 individual uh, microwells with five different diameters. The main feature is the integration of different sized microwells of defined geometry capable of reliably trapping increasing cell numbers. So to evaluate whether a specific geometry feature allows precise control over the formation of reproducible, uniformly sized and single multicellular spheroids, of defined dimension, different uh, well shapes and geometries were uh, investigated. They saw that only hemispherical dimension designs are able to reliably generate in every micro well diameter spheroids of increasing size in a linear fashion. In turn, elliptical, para paraboloid, and spherical gap shaped ca cavities 
resulted in an irregular and less controllable spheroid formation and in contrast walls with uh, sharper or flatter curvatures and cylindrical shapes revealed a higher probability of multiple spheroid formation in uh, each cavity. The supply and the continuous uh, perfor perfusion of cell culture medium were uh, achieved by gravity-induced bidirectional fluid circulation using an automated tilting motion of the microfluidic array. Computational uh, fluid dynamics simulation and experiment were performed to estimate fluid velocities and shear forces. And they saw that uh, an elevated flow regime uh, provided homogeneous distributions of cell suspension during cell loading and trapping in the microwaves and officially removed non-trapped cells. Also, there was a 75 to 80% reduction of fluid velocity in the microwaves and the fluid uh, streamlines fully enveloped the entire spheroid without a uh, indication of uh, turbulence. So also to evaluate the growth rate in terms of diameters and spheroid size separation, a panel of standardized cancer cell lines and human fibers uh, incubation period and cell depend cell type dependent spheroid diameters were already obtained after three days in a non chip culture for lung, liver, colon, and skin spheroids. And this means that by varying initial cell seeding densities, an extensive range of range of spheroid sizes can be reliable reliably generated, and cell line specific growth differences can be uh, readily evaluated. So they evaluated these uh, spheroids and uh, well, roundness and solidity of spheroids determines the ability to form tight, well-defined round cell aggregates. Results here in 5B indicate the absence of significant roundness and solidity differences for all cell lines. So Pointing, uh, thus pointing to the generation of stable and reproducible spheroids for various cell lines and tissue types. Also to demonstrate the platform's capability of performing uh, functional fluorescent based assays, they next uh, monitor uh, time result changes of stress activity and uh, hypoxia levels on the chip. So in addition, identification of time dependent metabolic activity variation was also achieved. And final spheroid quality evaluation involved the uh, investigation of hypoxic conditions for a, a cultivation period of 12 days on the chip. And the results are shown in 5D. And they revealed that uh, the presence of hypoxic conditions in all spheroids after 12 days of a uh, cultivation period. In the next, uh, next set of experiments, the effects of anti-cancer drug treatment scenarios on increasing spheroid sizes were evaluated to assess toxicity shifts resulting from diffusion-limiting uh, drug penetration using dexorubicin and cisplatin. And overall, the diffusivity results indicated that an indirect uh, proportional correlation between spheroid sites and drug transport exists and to evaluate the ability of the microfluidic array to accomplish uh, therapy optimizations. The effect of the combinatorial drug concentrations on increasing tumor size was investigated. They uh, wanted to identify the best drug ratio capable of el eliminating all tumor spheroids independent of their sites. As you can see in the figure uh, in part C, you uh, there's uh, represented uh, all these results are represented as a heat map. And uh, finally, to uh, investigate the ability of the microfluidic array to reliably induce the formation of a 3D blood brain barrier spheroids, they use uh, human primary astrocytes and human primary pericytes. And those were cultivated with immortalized endothelial and an immortalized endothelial cell line. And they saw that a large blood brain barrier spheroids with a 1 1 3 cell ratio exhibited uh, a distinct barrier integrity. So, this is all for this paper. Thank you very much.
Okay. Good morning, everyone. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Um, in this case, I'm, I'm going to talk about this um, uh, topic. Uh, this is a um, uh, this is the title combining microfluidics with a machine learning algorithms for red blood cells classification in rare hereditary hemolytic anemia. Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, this is hereditary hemolytic anemia. Uh, this is a um, defect of the red blood cells. Yeah. You know? And normally it's a clinic uh, diagnostics that use a specific machine. Uh, in this case, the authors use the microfluidic device in order to mimic the slits of the spleen. Uh, the spleen is, is an organ specialized in filtering the blood, removing the old and defective red blood cells. This is important. Okay, and they use uh, two uh, different uh, um, cooperative learning approach, a uh, deep learning approach. The one is the majority voting scheme and this second one is maximum sum scores they use both algorithms or deep learning algorithms in order to classify these hereditary hemolytic anemia okay uh, this M -M hereditary hemolytic anemia are classified in in some of them uh, they use uh, this uh, 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 cycle cell disease ccd and the thalassemia syndrome T-H-E-A-L, and the hereditary esferocytosis, A-H, okay? And they use uh, this uh, hemolytic anemia uh, with the patients. Uh, normally, as I, as I told you, uh, they use the uh, specific diagnosis with this ectacytometry or flow cytometry, but some cases it is it's difficult to access to this uh, machine that is the reason that some patients, it's difficult to get what is exactly disease uh, uh, emanemia that they, they got. For this reason, they use the microfluidic technologies in order to, to use this uh, uh, as a technique to get a, a rapid diagnostic with this uh, microfluidic device. Okay. Uh, we will see what is the workflow of the, this scheme. This is a workflow for that the uh, authors get the, these results. First, uh, they use uh, um, uh, the samples that collect for a control group and the, and the, uh, and the patients that they, they have this uh, disease. And then collect the red, blue, uh, the red uh, cells and then they use a perfusion in order to use in, a, in a, this chip. And uh, this is the, the chip. Uh, the idea of this is use this microfluidic to mimic this organ. Yeah? And normally, uh, in, uh, in, in our body, we have the, the red uh, cells, the red blood cells. And after cross the organ, uh, these are the slits uh, that they form that the red blood, that the red cells. And normally, whether are healthy, they recover it the normal shape but what happens if you have uh, uh, this uh, rare uh, hemolytic uh, anemia hereditary anemia they don't recover the shape and that is a reason there are different uh, um, as i told you different uh, uh, emoly uh, different uh, hemolytics depends of the uh, shape of these uh, uh, red set bloods and then they collect the video, they label it before and after cross these slits. And after that, they collect this information. They use a, 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 a neural network in order to classify uh, this uh, disease. And they obtain the results, okay? We will see the results. Okay, this is the first um, uh, uh, majority voting approach for deep learning. And they obtain this uh, uh, this uh, result. They they got twenty seven healthy um, uh, red blood cells and and four with this rare anemia uh, hereditary hemolytic 
the percentage of this is is like a, a, a nearly to 90 percent and more than 90 percent with this and then they change the the percentage of 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 a threshold of image in order to uh, for example when you make videos some cases it's difficult to get the real shape the i'm sorry the real shape of the of this like this and they use uh, the threshold in order to what happened if you got a bad a bad video you you got uh, the same results and they use this 30 uh, percent or 40 percent and obviously they decrease uh, a little bit in these cases but in some cases uh, they increase the ability to the uh, to the software okay and then uh, the, the idea is to differentiate diff three different uh, that I mentioned, these three different um, hemolytic uh, hereditary rare uh, disease, and this is the the percentage that they 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 got with this majority voting, and then they use the other one. This is the, uh, the maximum tr trustedness, and they got this percentage. And this is the uh, the the image that they collect, yeah. And the idea is use this microfluidic uh, to to get a diagnostic, and they got a, a great results. But they are now uh, try to uh, investigate more in order to uh, patent this microfluidic uh, technique. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Can you see the screen? Yes. Good morning, everyone. The paper of the week is the effect of viscosity on the ondulatory swimming dynamics of CA. In this paper, they have investigated the swimming dynamics of CA in fluid of different viscosity. The drag coefficients were mutual and compared to the theoretical models. In the, the swimming dynamics of a single C elegans was studied with micropiped deflection. In these figures, we can see these techniques. And these techniques is used to measure force with sub nanonewtons resolution. The, the, the world's motion is likely to the wave stream, wave on the stream, and in the micro micro impact dimension uh, are one to three centimeters of large and 20 micrometers deep. the ones have one lateral and pro and propulsive direction lateral and propulsive direction the force the 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 pipette were calibrated with pitching out a small droplet of water to hang on the outside of the capillary. And the, the pipette and droplet could be imaged with optical microscopy. Optical microscopy, the droplet volume was obtained as a function of the pipette reflection. In, with, with, 
the swimming motion was recorded with a, a camera and MATLAB software was used to track the motion of the walls. The kinematics quantities obtained, in the, for example, uh, were obtained, for example, frequency, amplitude, and wavelength, uh, and wavelength. The instantaneous velocity of each segment of the world's body was calculated, and the total velocity was obtained by means of the integrated calculus. Uh, equation one, the, 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 the equation one is this, and we can see the relationship between tangential force and normal force with tangential velocity and the drag coefficient at C T R and C R the drag co the drag coefficient. In this paper, the author uh, uh, measures that coefficient. Figure uh, two. Figure two. Uh, we we can see the viscosity of polyethylene oxide. The polyethylene oxide was used to obtain higher viscosity solution or EM9 solution. M9 solution is the is the standard buffer used for C elements. EM solution. And uh, the Polyethylene oxide is is used in order to uh, in order to change the viscosity of the solution. And in, in figures two, the fit the red fit, the the red line is fit of date, and in the rest of the experiment, uh, the viscosity are calculated with this. Figure 3 uh, shows the change of the swimming kinematics, the C elements, R, B, and C. Uh, the, the lowest to higher viscosity. And we can see the decrease of the amplitude of motion on the, on the walls. And we can observe the weight motion on the walls body and we can calculate the typical parameters of the wave. In this case, this system is similar to that the wave of a stream. Pivot 5 is this. They show the lateral force A and B and propulsive force C and D for low and high viscosity respectively. In Low viscose and higher viscose. We can see that the that the oscillation, force oscillation, is better with the with the high viscosity solution. In M in M nine, the buffer, the standard buffer, we measure a mean propulsive force. In low viscosity, viscosity uh, force is 0 0.3 nanonewtons, and high viscosity uh, is it 10, 10 times uh, higher. In figure 6, uh, show the drag coefficient with day error bars and the model's prediction model prediction is a blue and red uh, shape areas and the propagate error is significant but uh, in conclusion the measures of the kinematics par uh, parameters of the c elegance uh, must be Must be, uh, must be more, more, more 
precision is misma, mi, mi Thank you very much.